So you made it back for episode three. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Shishi and my bubble nest is behind me. But this is episode three of the Beta Breeding Breakdown. And in this particular episode, we're gonna go over the parent fish. And just to rule everything else out, a perfect beginner fish for someone who's coming into breeding is a placat. And I'm just gonna assume that for the purposes of this video, you are breeding placats. And that's because there's so many different genetic issues with other tail types such as double tails or um, rose tails and feather tails and the longer fin varieties that this video would just be way too long. It, it, would just, it would just run on forever and I would constantly be running back to, well, this fish has this and this fish has this and you gotta look out for that. And I think I'm gonna cover all of these different scenarios in every single episode there's going to be different sections that you can actually look into so i think i'm going to cover particular tail types and the genetic traits that some of these tail types may have and things that you need to look out for further on in this series so let's get back to it and i have got some notes so excuse me keep looking down i just want to make sure that i cover every single possible aspect of breeding your beta um, for the healthiest results and the easiest results for you guys to achieve and succeed because You know, we all want you to succeed of course now. We've already established that For the purposes of this video. We are going to be breeding placat Now a placat is a short fin the, the original short finned variety of better splendens and They typically are the healthiest they don't have all the weight of the fins dragging them down they actually have some resistances to some of the elements that the other fish get so as a general beginner breeding fish i would definitely recommend sticking with placat so the first thing i want to um go over is scales because when selecting your parent fish, you, you want to look for the healthiest traits that you possibly can and you don't want to breed something that may or m may be carrying either a bad genetic line or possible illness. So here's some things with the scales that you want to look out for. And the first being, you want to make sure that all of the scales are perfectly, like, go in line with the body. You want to make sure every single one of them just stays completely straight and there's no, no, nothing on there that looks like it may be a little bit of a smudge or like someone poked their fingers into wet paint. That's kind of how you want to make sure that the fish, that their scales are perfectly in line. Now, the second thing you want to look for is the eyes. With the eyes, you want to make sure that the fish's eyes are completely clear, there's no blindness which usually would be like a, a milky appearance or a cloudy appearance in one of the eyes or both of the eyes. You want to make sure that there's no scales that are formed on the, on the eyes also. You want to make sure that that eye lens of, on that fish is completely clear of any kind of obstruction. And um, going back to the scales, the other thing you want to make sure with the scales is that there's nothing that looks like it may be a lump or a small, uh, like a darker pigment in the uh, like a raised almost like a freckle like you you want to make sure that all of those scales are completely flat against their bodies that there's no little lumps there's no raised scales anywhere you want to make sure that they all go in a perfect straight line and then furthermore you want to make sure that the eyes are not cloudy that there's no scales forming on the eyes and generally they look bright and vibrant there are some cats that will, will have their breeding coming from uh, dragon scale lines or warrior lines, samurai lines. So you've got to kind of keep an eye out for the thickening of the scales because sometimes if they do have a galaxy line, for instance, galaxy is a common term used for it too. If they do have that in there somewhere, the chances are they may form scales on their eyes and, and you really don't want that. That's not something that is, is wanted to obstruct obstruct their eyes sight and it's not something that you want to breed either so then i want to go into the finnage now the plaquette is 
very compact. It's a very neat fish. And you want to make sure that all of the fins are in proportion with its body. Like you, you want to make sure that the fish's body is nice, healthy and even. And you want to make sure that the fins are in proportion. So you don't want this scrawny little fish with these giant fins that just don't kind of match its body. And also at the same time, you don't want a fish with a really, really thick body and fins that just don't look like they fit, like they belong to a, 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 a juvenile fish. You, you definitely want to make sure that everything is in proportion as much as it can be. And that goes with all of the finnage. You want to make sure that the, um, the tail, for instance, when you're breeding placats, if your male fish has a perfectly straight D shape, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. You want the tail to be a perfectly straight line and then the D to come out. And you want it to be as even as possible. So saying the middle of the fish is here, you wanna make sure that, that D is perfectly in proportion and that it's evenly balanced. So like the top of the tail is not kind of shorter than the bottom of the tail and the bottom of the tail being heavier, almost like the bottom, of, like the fish has shifted like this. You want it to be as close into the middle as possible and you don't want it to be top heavy and you don't want it to be bottom heavy. You want it to be in the middle. And also, um, when you're choosing your female fish, you want your female to complement your male. Now, that doesn't mean you get the female to be exactly the same as the male, but you definitely want the tail. For me, when I breed plaquette, I don't want to extend the rays any further than I, I'm going for that perfect D, the perfect D shape. I don't want to extend the rays further so that they're like this. Even though the over half moon actually is, if you're breeding for showing, the over half moon is more desired. But you want to try your hardest to keep them at half moon. And in order to achieve this, you don't want a female with an exact half moon. Because if you put the two half moons together, you could get excessive branching you could get the over half moon which is good but the excessive branching in the tail can make it misbalanced and unbalanced so i always go for a female that may be just fractionally under a half moon so that the male's strength of his half moon will actually bring those rays really nice and neatly back to a half moon from the female the ventral fins if you're not sure what the ventral fins are those the two little thin fins that come down underneath the fish. Those are the ventral fins. And when it comes to the ventral fins, you want to make sure that they're an even thickness and an even length. You don't want one to be here and the other one to be here. And you don't want one to be like a thumb and the other one to be a pinky. You want them to be as even and, and again, in proportion with the rest of the fish. When you're breeding them, I always look for the male who has, I personally, I like my ventral fins to be not much longer than the, the very back end of the anal fin. And the anal fin is the fin that runs along the belly and it comes down to a point underneath the belly. And I like the ventral fins to be no longer than the, the deepest point of the male's anal fin. And the same with the female. I like them to be as balanced as I possibly can get. I don't want them to be too long and I don't want them to be too short. And sometimes you actually will get beta that don't have ventral fins. And this is actually not so much of a genetic thing, it's actually a breeder's error. If your fish does not have the two ventral fins underneath it, the chances are that the tank that they were in, when they were spawned and when they were being raised, the bottom of that tank was dirty and it actually burns the ventral fins off because they're, one, they're, they're so tiny and the ammonia and the, the 
just the dirt in the bottom of the tank, particularly from micro worms or banana worms, those actually will eat the ventral fins or burn the ventral fins off of the fish's body. So the fish actually won't have ventral fins. And like I said, that is not a genetic trait. That is actually a breeder's error in not keeping the bottom of that tank clean. Now, as I previously touched on the anal fin, and again, the anal fin is the fin that runs along the body, underneath the belly, and it typically starts off little and it kind of gradually comes down to a point. And that's exactly how you want it to do. You want it to come down and up. So it's this kind of shape. I know that's very difficult to visualize, but maybe I'll put in a picture to show you. You want that Again, you want it to come to a point. You don't want it to be completely flat. You don't want it to be the front of it longer than the back of it. You want the back of it to come to a point and you want it to kind of meet the tail. And when it meets the tail or the caudal fin, you definitely don't want it to extend super far down from the tail. You want it to be at or just fractionally lower than the, than the tail fin. You don't want it to be over long and you don't want it to be short and you don't want it to be straight. Again, it's all about proportion. You want to look at that fish and see that the dorsal fin, the caudal fin, the anal fin and the ventral fins are all in proportion with each other. So now that's gonna bring me to the dorsal fin. And the dorsal fin being on the back of the fish. And typically with the plaquette, it should be almost like a half moon that comes up a little bit and backwards. You don't want it to branch forwards. You want it to come back like this. You do not want it to branch forwards this way. You want it to be flowing this way. And you don't want it to overextend too far, but again, it needs to meet the caudal fin and it needs to be in proportion with it. You don't want it to be super high and you don't want it to be non-existent. You want it to be a nice, even, a nice, even flow between that and the caudal fin. And I really hope that you're kind of getting a visual of what I'm trying to say. But again, for the most part, your male and your female, if, you, if your male has really strong attributes and really good genetics, and all of the fins are like perfectly sculpted the way you know price show fish style your female if your female has slightly weaker structure to their tail or their caudal fin maybe their caudal uh, sorry their dorsal fin maybe the dorsal fin on the female is not quite at that point of meeting the caudal fin and it's a little bit lower but your males is absolutely completely on point that female will be fine because the male will actually, the, the female's dorsal fin and the male's dorsal fin will find a happy medium and typically it will, it will actually form a very, very nice, even flowing dorsal caudal, caudal tail, uh, fin, dorsal caudal and anal fin. You want them all to be in proportion and you want them to be in proportion on the female but if her attributes aren't quite as on point as your male your male should carry the weight through for the female so when it comes to color probably one of my best pieces of advice is the color palette and one of the best ways of doing this and it sounds ridiculous but if you're someone who's dyed your hair a lot you understand that mixing one color with another color is gonna end up in something that is probably not desirable. So for instance, don't mix two colors that are too opposite. You wanna mix colors that will blend better in the genetic pool. And right now it seems to be, the go-to fish right now, is, it seems to be koi. And I can completely understand why I'm infatuated with them. They are 
absolutely beautiful and you never actually fully know how those babies are going to turn out. You don't know what the patterns are going to be because there's so many different patterns when it comes to koi that it's absolutely fascinating to watch and personally I just bred my placards who are koi and I'm I am like a kid in a candy store because I just want them to grow up already and I want to see what they look like. So those are some of the some of the basic things I feel like you should be thinking about when you're breeding. Because you've made it to the third episode. Stick around and see what else you can learn with me and I hope that you experience some absolutely fantastic frying. I can't wait to see the pictures and the postings and and everything when when you guys contact me and tell me hey I spawned this batch of fish and this is how they turned out I would love to see it so please by all means reach out to me on Facebook and Instagram share with me the excitement to me there is nothing more exciting than seeing if those little tweaks that you think you've got the perfect male and you've think that you've got the perfect complementary female for him and then letting them spawn and then raising your fry and seeing how they turn out to me that is just the best especially when you get perfectly perfect good results that are either at where you wanted or where you expected them to be or they're a step closer to where your goal is and that to me is the best feeling ever. So I hope that that has helped a little bit on selecting your parents. And like I said before, you can reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm pretty easy to find. My name is the same on every single platform. Um, and I wish you the best. And I hope that you join me for the next episode of the Beta Breeding Breakdown. And in the meantime, I wish you good luck and happy spawning.